during your deposition, what were the circumstances under which you decided to call Mr. Depp an idiot? Under somebody to call Mr. Depp an idiot? Yeah, you called Mr. Depp an idiot in your deposition. Why oh, I think, oh, oh, okay. So I think it was in the context. I think it was in the, I should, probably should read the context of it. Because I think the context was, and I'm trying to think back, and I'm trying to think back, okay? And what I thought it was related to was if you're coming to some deposition, okay? And again, I'm thinking back. So I may, you have it in front of you. I don't. So I'm thinking back where was he's coming in from Europe for a deposition, a uh, video deposition that he gave, and he took it overnight the night before. And what I think I said was that if you're going to take a, if you're going to do a major thing to a, a trial that you're involved with, I think you'd be an idiot to come in the night before. All right. So I didn't call Mr. Depp an idiot. I certainly called that planning an idiot. I didn't call him an idiot. So the words, so I mean he's an idiot, are mistranscribed? No, I'm sure, again, if I said it in that, con if you just read one line, one snippet, I'm sure it was in the context I just said. But again, you have it in front of you, I don't. Yeah. Uh, is uh, idiot a professional opinion? I wasn't writing a professional opinion. Yeah. No. Is it a psychiatric opinion? And that follows the, the Goldwater rule. How does it follow the? Well, you just said that. I'm not rendering a professional opinion. I just said idiot. That's not a. No, so idiot is not a professional opinion. Mm -hmm. is, is it your practice to describe people as idiots? My practice to describe people in my practice? No, I don't describe people clinical my clinical cases as idiots or patients as idiots or victims as idiots. No, sir. But you sat for a deposition in this case and and describe the plaintiff as an idiot. Correct. Uh, you gave me nine hours of deposition. And if I said the word idiot, it was an idiot in planning. It wasn't making him an idiot. I don't know Mr. Depp's IQ. I don't know his overall functioning. So therefore, if I said it, it was an idiot in planning, which is what I meant to come across as. All right. So you did say you don't know his overall functioning. But you made some testimony today as to some evaluations you made relative to his functioning. You would agree with me that it's probably a good idea to think about the questions that are asked you in a court proceeding before answering them. Am I allowed to answer that question? Yes. Okay. So what I meant by function, what I said by function, I believe that his agent reported how late he was showing up to every movie while the cast is waiting for him. I believe that would be an impairment. If I showed up late for that, I would not be here right now. I would not have a job. Okay. I believe the thing was in terms of uh, balking out of treatment for substance rehab that his doctor is prescribing for him. So if you're asking me if that's an impairment of functioning, I would say I'm very much substantiated in that. I'm, I'm trying to understand how you got to this notion of cognitive decline. And I, I thought it was based at least in part on, on the manner in which he testified. On the, I'm sorry, what? On the manner in which he testified. On the manner, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm not being difficult. I can't hear. I'm sorry. On what? But I was asking you about the cognitive decline yes. testimony that you made. Yes. And it was my understanding that at least a portion of that testimony that you rendered was that you derived some evidence of cognitive decline from the way Mr. Depp testified. Yes. Okay. And that's what I said, yes. Right. And so all I'm asking you is, you, don't you think it's a good idea when you're in the middle of a court proceeding to answer questions carefully? Again, professionally, we diagnose patients with a neurocog disorder by gross evaluation all the time with cognitive decline. On the thought that, again, age normal controls... I'm just saying, age normative controls does not put a 58-year-old gentleman at that processing. That's all I'm saying. That's right. all I said. And you derive this without ever once talking to the man. Me, me, me directly talking to him. Because I heard, because we know how I derived it. So you're talking about me directly talking to him? Yeah, you never talk no, to him. I never, no, I've never talked to him. Right. And th this exam you gave, well, you did talk about Mr. Uh, Dr. Blaustein, right? Yes, sir. 
And you understand that the entirety of Dr. Blaustein's uh, medical records are 12 pages of handwritten notes. The important part was what I said. For me, as an example of cognition, which I'm trying to prove, which is what you asked me, the important part was what I said. And that was irrefutable. <laughs> the important part is that he, give, he gave the mini mental status exam? Yes, sir. All right. That's Let's talk cognitive. about the mini mental status exam. Scored on a 30-point scale, right? Yes. All right. And it's, it's an exam that basically is most often used for, what, Alzheimer's, dementia, those kind of uh, testing? It, it's an exam that tests cognition in all psychiatric illnesses, not just Alzheimer's. It was made for dementia for Alzheimer's, but it is the standard has been the standard for testing cognition in all psychiatric illness, substance use disorders included. Okay. Now, there is an element of that exam that requires drawing, correct? Yes. So you don't know what drawing Mr. Depp did or whether the drawing should have been fully scored. I, I wasn't questioning his visual spatial perceptual skills which is what that does. Right. And you don't know what score Mr. Depp received on the exam. I was very specific. I know three words, not remembering at five minutes. That's all I said. Three words, not remembering five minutes, and he, he remembered one of them, right? From what I'm saying, he didn't remember any of them. All right. M memory on the exam, out of the 30 points, what's it worth? Three. Th Three, right? Memory is three out of the third. Yeah, memory is three. Okay. But again, the memory section in and of itself tests memory. That's okay. the only question that tests memory, only section that actually tests memory. So the memory section tests memory. It's the only section you're testified about. And for all you know, that we're, with respect to the exam that you're relying on, Mr. Depp scored 27 out of 30. And that would be telling, though, cognitive, if you score 27 and 30 and you miss three points on memory. That would be very telling. You don't know if Mr. Depp had been up all night the night before. Again, you wouldn't expect to not recall any words at three minutes unless there's a cognitive issue. You don't know if Mr. Depp was high. And again, oh, now that's, again, now that could affect memory, but I'm not, I'm not refuting that. I'm not refuting that at all. I, he could have been high, he could have been drunk, he could have been using cocaine, and that would absolutely affect his memory, which right. is what I said. Yes, you're right. So ultimately, you have no idea what state Mr. Depp was in at the, at the time he took the exam that you're relying on. Short of what you just said about drugs and alcohol, okay, there shouldn't be a reason why a 58-year-old also with strokes and other neurocognitive conditions, but short of that, there shouldn't be a really good reason why someone at that age shouldn't come up with at least one. But, but an answer, but, but, but wait a minute, you, you, you started that question with short of drugs and alcohol and spent 35 minutes talking about his use of drugs and alcohol. Isn't that right? Oh, I'm agreed. What I, I thought I agreed with you. I think I agreed. I said that drugs and alcohol can absolutely affect cognition. I'm not so, sure. I, yeah, I agree, but I'm not sure if that's a, Problem. I agree with you on that. All right. So you don't know one way or the other how he scored 